Thank you very much and welcome to the Georges River Planning Panel of the uh, 25th of May 2023. Uh, my name is Sue Francis and I'm the chair of the panel and the panel is currently streaming from the council offices in McMahon Street, Hurstville. The panel members today are Annette Ruhans, uh, Away Piracha and Erin Sellers. Um, and we're the panel who's been appointed by the planning minister to determine certain applications on for within the um, Georgia's River Council. Um, first up, I'd like to acknowledge the Biddical people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of all the lands, waters and sky in the Georgia's River area. We pay our respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who live, work and meet on these lands. What I need to do, whilst we have people in the council chamber at the moment, we are also live streaming. Um, so you need to be aware of that and that streaming will be made available on council's website. Please ensure that appropriate language is used because um, this is a public and live streamed uh, meeting. Um, we have four registrations to speak on the one item we have on the agenda and that item is um, the uh, 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 nine slash 23 279 Rocky Point Road, San Susie. It was an item that was previously deferred from the panel for clarification of certain issues, and the matter has now come back for consideration. Um, I have, as I said, I have four people to speak, I think, against the application, and I think I have one person to speak on behalf of the applicant. What I will do is I will. Um, call you each in order, and that is in the order I have here, which is Debbie Kuafu, sorry if I got that wrong, Wayne Andrew Took, George Weeby, and Michael Vine. So you will have um, three minutes for any presentation. Now, I know that some people have left us some written material here, which is great, but you don't have to read it all verbatim because you've only got three minutes and if you're trying to read all of that verbatim you probably run out of time so kick, uh, stick to the key points I would advise you to do that um, particularly that this matter we deferred it deferred it for particular reasons so I strongly urge you to to uh, focus your commentary on the issues that were deferred um, just for clarity um, all parties have been required to sign um, a disclosure as to whether they have any pecuniary interests and what I'd like to do is to put onto the record uh, that no panel member has any uh, pecuniary interest but they might like to update that so we'll start with Aaron if you could speak no interest no, uh, no and I'm Sue Francis and I've got no conflict of interest either so there we go so what we will do is we will go through the three uh, projectors, that's Debbie, Wayne and George, and then we'll speak to Michael Vine, who wishes to add some additional issues, and then we will close the meeting and we'll make a determination on this matter. So that being the case, we will start with our first speaker, and I don't know whether it was in person or remotely last time, I can't remember, it might have been in person, but uh, if you're called to speak, if you'd like to come up to the microphone, put the microphone on so we can hear you. And that's Debbie um, first. And you have three minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to address the panel again. My name is Debbie Kuku and I previously spoke in opposition of the application, um, raising matters pertaining to land use, safety, security, parking, waste management and easement. It is to be noted that Council received 47 objection letters during the application notification, raising the concern of the community and surrounding residents. In saying this, we believe the application should have been re-notified given the overwhelming response from the community in order to provide our comments on the resubmitted material. I stand before you today to address some additional concerns the community and I share with regards to the Exodus operation. I live in 26 Alice Street, which is located two doors down from the subject site and consider my family, my neighbours, properties to be directly impacted by this application. The subject site is located on the border of Georgia's River Council and is heavily surrounded by low density dwelling houses. Despite our 
disregarded concerns by council, the application has been rec recommended for approval. We have reviewed the submitted material and council's assessment report and raised the following issues the panel should take into account. Hours of operation. It is unacceptable and concerning that the council have not questioned the proposed hours of operation for a community facility. The applicants have proposed hours of operation from 9 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. Panel members, we pose the question to you. Do you think it is reasonable for a community facility providing youth group services between 5 and 9.30 p.m. with kids finishing school at the latest 3.30 p.m.? Additionally, the youth programs are only running on Monday and Thursday. Why is there a change of hours from the existing business hours to accommodate two youth sessions on Monday and Thursday until 9.30 p.m.? A study was conducted regarding operating hours of the Exodus Youth Works and other non-for-profit providers. And we found the following. Um, I've got examples that you have in front of you. I won't run into them, but they all work from nine to five. Um, Exodus Youth Works currently operates from nine to five, Monday to Friday. If this site is bigger and allows for more services, isn't it justifiable that it can kite can cater for more people within the existing operating hours. This remains unexplained. The community and I strongly encourage the panel to rethink the excessive hours of operation for the, com for the community facility if more reasonable hours such as 9 to 4.30 or 5 p.m. were adopted. So the application seeks to change the use of community facility and permits physical, social, cultural and intellectual development or welfare, as indicated in the floor plan, an industrial size kitchen and meals areas proposed. However, as per the Georges River LEP, food production is prohibited in the zone. We understand council has conditioned the kitchen must not be used for commercial purposes. However, condition 17, food premises states that construction and fit out of food premises must be submitted to council's environmental health officer. Food premises is prohibited use in the SP2 zone. This application's approval is in the context of the auxiliary food premise use breaches and opens this application to third party appeals in the land of environment court. Right of way. Council failed to address the parking issue that impacts on the agreed easement between 28 Alice Street and 279 Rocky Point Road as the contract sale of both properties. There should be a 2.5 metre right of way for both properties to have access to Telstra Towers. The proposal fails to meet this requirement and encroaches the easement. Parking. The original Traffic reports were completed during COVID lockdown and school holidays, which was not a true representation. The amended traffic report indicates the morning operations rely heavily on on-street parking, which cannot be accommodated as a parking requirements table. I reiterated that community facilities have a plan in our society. However, this proposal excessively pushes the envelope with issues such as hours of operation that makes it unsupportable for the perspective of the community. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The next speaker I have is Wayne Took. Before I start, I was going to talk about hours of operation, as you can see by that. Debbie has covered that. Just one other point I'd like to add to it. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Wayne Tuka and thank you for the opportunity of speaking again. I live at 24 Elm Street, San Susie, three doors up from the uh, proposed DA. I have um, Jepson's have centered around six points, hours of operation. Um, what assurances can Exodus for the safety of residents, children, both on the street and at school, the elderly and disabled at the properties of the residents? Exodus has covered this very important expert in a very minimal manner to date. Additionally, in the operational plan, pages three and four, Exodus provided a detailed plan of their operational timetable on page four, saying that only Mondays and Fridays will be open till 9.30. However, on page three, they state that Bible study will be held on Wednesdays to 
if they cannot get a simple uh, timetable correct in an important document, given they've had six months since the last meeting, how can we trust them in the future should this DA proceed? Contradictions from the agenda and the executive website. It states that counselling for depression, anxiety, addiction, gambling, alcohol, social media, but their website clearly states that drug addiction, substance abuse, and sex and pornography is also covered, refer to the second point of the attachment. But no reference to this is given to the fact in the LLP or the operational plan of management. Exodus has still not included any of the in any of their submissions to council or the public as part of their DA that they deal with people who suffer from drug addiction, substance abuse, sexual or pornographic problems, and now possibly criminal history. Point three, criminal history. It states in the um, operational plan that clients are screened on a number of aspects, including criminal and legal history. My question is, are all individuals with a criminal or legal history rejected? And if not, what is the level of criminal or legal history would be acceptable to exodus? If this is the case, it is placing the safety of residents and children in the surrounding area of the proposed DA in jeopardy without them knowing the potential harm that may occur. If the DA proceeds, the uh, additional measures to migrate impacts. In their operational plan of management, page seven, dot, seventh and eighth dot point, provision of CCTV and sensor lighting, no mention has been given to installing the CCTV and sensor lights along the side of the building being out street. Cost of works. When the DA was submitted on the 14th of April, April 22, the cost of work submitted was being at 181,500. It's been now over a year, and these costs and labor costs and materials have escalated enormously, as this has been well documented in the media. What are the real costs? Maybe an independent auditor or, if, or estimator should be asked to do it. Contaminated areas. In the second LLP, agenda regarding contaminated areas. Council stated that the areas must be made safe. My questions to these are, what duration of time is required to be completed after the contaminated process has been completed before any structural and or internal changes can be made? Are we talking about weeks, months, if so, how many, or years, if so, how many? What safety measures will be in place to protect the residents and the community at large during this process? In summary, with all of the above that I've detailed, Exodus is not providing the full story to Council and the community, once again of their services and now cost of works to ensure a smooth pathway to their development application. No one denies the fact that Exodus and similar organisations provide the necessary services to the community today in today's social environment but the location of such services must be consideration at all times. Exodus are currently located in an industrial area where the safety of residents of all ages and their property would not be as an important issue as it is under this current DA. Additionally, at the last public meeting to discuss this DA, the objectivity and neutrality of the council was questioned as Exodus clearly displayed the fact that the Georges River Council sponsored Exodus. Since that last meeting, I have checked their website and could not find any sponsorships for Exodus being displayed, including the Council. If this is the case, my question is, has Council requested the removal of their logo to give the impression of a neutral or impartial member of this DA process? Thank you. Thank you very much. Did I turn that on? Uh, you can leave it on because I think we have another speaker now. I'll press the speaker. Did I? It's, like, it's on. <laughs> um, George Beebe. Is George online? Ah, uh, right. So we probably do need to close that off. George, can you hear us? This is George. He's up there. Oh, that's not George. Sorry. 
Oh, right. My apologies. <laughs> Do we have George? He, George was online. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, if we can't find him, we'll go to um, Michael. Is that you online? Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes, it's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, well, our previous speaker we can't find either in person or online, so it's over to you. Do you wish to, uh, well, there are a couple of things I'd like you to comment on, which is about the uh, potential discrepancy in the um, plan of management. Did you hear that about the Bible? Um, yeah. yeah, I did hear that. Um, and it was my understanding that the... Um, the, there's a table provided in the, in the plan of management and the revision B is the document that I'm looking at. And to me, it says that um, it identifies that hours will be between 9 a.m. in the morning and, and 9.30 at night. And so my understanding that correlates with the condition relating to hours of operation. Um, but in any event, the 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 timetable is always, it was always expressed as an indicative um, indication of the uh, the way the facility will op operate and ultimately it will fit within um, part 3.1 of the operational plan of management which is the operating hours between 9 and 9.30 um, and to my understanding that's consistent with the recommendations of um, uh, 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 the conditions that's put before the panel um, for the hours of operation unless, I, unless I'm missing something. No I think there, I think what was being highlighted was, was that the table suggests that there is no um, uh meetings on wednesday evening and yet your 3.1 suggests a bible study from 7 30 to 9 30. okay um so and, and so that, was, that was just a discrepancy one. yep oh, i see sorry 3.2 sorry 3.2 um where are we so uh, 3.2 uh, okay okay uh, look it's um yeah, that is a discrepancy, but ultimately I don't think it has any bearings um, on the requested hours of operation. The table, as I said before, is is an idea of what it will look like. Um, that may change according to demand. As you can imagine, a community facility needs to be adaptable um, according to community demand. Uh, and it's really just those hours that we're seeking between 9 and 9.30. Uh, and, and that was provided as a bit of an idea to show that the intensity that we're, we're seeking uh, would fall within a timetable that's sort of indicated uh, on that particular table. So uh, I, I'm happy for the panel to um, require that discrepancy to be updated, but I, I don't see it as being um, fundamental to what we're seeking and, and, and what's ultimately being approved here. Okay, so can I just clarify then that there is still a maximum of 14 patrons at any one time and a maximum staff at any one time, is that right? That's right, yeah. So there's 19 in total and it's five staff members and 14 patrons. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anything else you want to say to us? And there may be some questions. Uh, yeah, I just, um, I mean, I, I agree with the staff recommendation in the report. Um, obviously, we've, we've we've worked with council to address some of the issues that the, the panel wanted us to look at, um, and and I think most importantly was the contamination issue. Uh, the we're, uh, council's specialists um, and internal um, environmental um, specialists are satisfied that uh, the reports and the conditions capture what's necessary for that. Ultimately, there was there's no levels of contamination that affect human health. It was simply identifying the removal of the tank was, is a good idea to avoid future contamination. And there's an action plan that is proposed to do that um, and, and to do that before any construction certificates issued um, for, the, for, um, for any fit out works, um, which has no objection um, from us on. Uh, I, the only the only thing I would say is I agree with all the conditions of um, consent imposed by council. There's just a couple of discrepancies that I wanted to raise for the panel um, and council, and it's just to do with uh, condition one, with the approval documents. Yep. The the version of the report I got, which I got off the internet um, reasonably quickly after it was released online, um, the approved documents. Um, I, I just want to go through those quickly because I, the site plan is fine. The existing floor plan, demolition plan and proposed plans is a fine. The elevations and sections, the dates are correct, but it's actually revision A for those. 
um, and that's consistent with what's been applied uh, or been provided at the back of the report. The operational plan of management, um, that's actually the revision B document and it's a different date. And I think it's a um, it's January 30 date, um, 30th of January from memory. Let me just check my notes. Uh, yeah, 30, 30th of January is the operational plan of management. And similarly, the uh, the operational plan, oh, sorry, the, um, the operational waste um, management plan um, should also be a revision B and, and that's the 31 of January um, 2023. So, uh, kind of minor clarifications there, but probably Sorry, fairly can, important. Sorry, can you um, come back to what was the date of the operational waste management plan? Um, that was, that is dated, um, let me just grab that, sorry. Um, it is, is your version, are, they, are those boxes just empty? Correct. Yeah, so the, the correct version that council has been referencing is um, revision B, um, yep. 30th of January, 2023. Thank you. Because that's important because there was a no, revision no, A tender absolutely. that was updated. Yeah. And the, um, and the, and, the, the remediation action plan, were they correct? Well, like I um, I haven't checked those. I mean, I don't think, like, I, I don't know why you would put a site investigation as an approved document because it is a site investigation. I would probably put the remediation action plan as, a, um, as an approved document. So I'd be happy to strike the pair of those out, but I, we're sort of splitting hairs, whether it's approved or not. Um, to me, the, the conditions of the consent um, capture the process and, and what they want us to do when and reference those particular documents, which is fine. Um, so, um, I, you know, I could be persuaded either way there, but they're, um, to my to my understanding, that they're the only versions that were lodged and, um, and they are correct. What, what I would say also is um, the panel may be minded to um, put in a condition, and I was just going through the documentation, and the site plan revision B has a superseded configuration to bins um, versus what the uh, waste management plan has. So I would just put in a condition 1A to say, uh, I think I've typed something out here and I can, I've just said for the avoidance of doubt, uh, the facility is to use the waste and recycling receptacles identified um, and stored per the operational plan of management revision B, because um, that actually identifies a smaller waste bin, a six, uh, uh, 240 litre bin, which has the, the width to be able to pass through I that must, area. Which I is, must admit that did catch me out because I couldn't see how, because I was looking at the plan and that hadn't changed. So could you, yeah, no, e could you email that to Yeah, that's fine. I'll email to the secretary if you want. Yeah, um, is, who's the best person to you? Panel secretary, please. Thank yeah, I'll very, do that now. Thank you very much. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, I think because they're, because both the site plan and the waste management plan are at the same sort of status in those conditions, it, it's, it's ambiguous as to what, as to which one prevails. So I'll, I'll send that through to um, just say that the location and receptacle size, and there's also a bin path that's plotted um, in the management plan. Essentially, they, they, they just use, yeah. yeah, they just use, it, it, it's the use of a smaller bin that can be handled and, um, and, and pass through that, that narrower section. So other than that, I don't have any, um, I, I mean, sticking to the script and in terms of the, the, the matters that the panel deferred um, the application for, I feel that we've provided information and worked with staff to, to overcome those and I'll, I'll welcome any questions that, um, that anyone has. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anyone have any questions? I'll start with you, you Annette, who might be newer to the matter. Thanks, Chair. Um, in relation to the maximum numbers, of patrons, so you've indicated 14. Um, mm. How will we ensure that that will happen? I know it's stated in the operations plan, but how will we know that we won't have a much greater number at any one particular occasion? Well, well, it's the number of people that um, the the facility is proposed to provide. I mean, we could, we could have put in 25 people if we if we wanted, but it's it's the number of people that they they anticipate and they're seeking and proposing to provide. Um, any application for any use or operation uh, is limited by conditions of consent, and the expectation is that what's proposed and what is approved will be um, will be what is undertaken on the property, and if the operators go outside of the conditions of, of consent, they'll be um, vulnerable to uh, like in, enforcement by, by council. And in the same way as a childcare centre or a nightclub or, or, or any other facility is, is restricted by um, maximum patron capacities, the, the mechanism is the consent. 
uh, and and the operator will be liable to operate within those parameters um, and, and will be investigated otherwise by council. Thank you. And that's it for me for now. Yeah, actually, yeah, this is a question related to that. Um, in some of those cases, uh, there's a register that is maintain, maintained or, or a record of how many people at any uh, any given time have used a, a premises. Uh, do you reckon that would be done? Um, like, by all means, what we could what we could do is we could um, we could also offer a, a condition of like you know I, I could provide some wording for a condition to say that there should be a uh, a register that you need to sign in when you enter the premise um, and sign in time a person uh, and time sign in sign out and and uh, that would probably satisfy uh, or provide at least some form of record uh, of of number of patrons um, at any one time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you could draft up some words, that would be quite handy. I'll but, do that. But I'll one, that. Of the, one of the things it would also have to do is to amend the plan of management in the same form. Um, to, that's to fine. To include a register. Yeah. The plan of management is obliged to keep a register as well. So that, that, that's good. fine. I'll, um, I, yeah, I'll think of something. Be handy. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Any other questions? Erin? No. OK, thank you. Anything else you wish to tell us? Um, no, nothing in particular. Um, I, I think it's pretty straightforward what the panel was requiring uh, from us, and, and I believe we provided it, and um, and, and council staff is satisfied. So, with, um, I'm yeah, I've got nothing further to add. Um, do we have now? Mr. Webb hasn't joined the meeting, and he's not answering his mic. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Um, that being that, we don't have any other speakers. So what I will do is I will close the meeting um, at 4.26 and then we will uh, deliberate and make a decision as soon as we possibly can. Thank you very much indeed, everyone.